Okay, welcome to our lesson number four. Let's resume again. So, in this lesson, we are going to proceed from our left to lesson number three. So, in lesson number three, we discussed equilibrium uh, reactions, and then we gave we mentioned factors which affect the dynamic equilibrium, of which we had concentration, we had temperature, pressure, and catalyst. So we're going to discuss each of those factors one by one in detail. So the first on our consideration list is concentration. How does concentration affect the position of the equilibrium? So when the concentration of the reactants or the product is altered or changed, the equilibrium always shifts in such a way as to cancel that change uh, by either effecting consumption of what was added or production of that which was removed. So if you add, then the equilibrium shifts in such a way as to consume what has been added and if you remove something from the equilibrium, it shifts such that what you have removed is brought back, it is formed back. So we'll use this a general question to illustrate that. So of which A and B represent the reactants, C and D represent the products. Now if you change the concentration of the reactants, either A or B or both of them, let's say for example you increase the concentration here. Because you have added on this side, the equilibrium is going to move to this side. It's going to, to uh, favor a reaction that comes this way. That is a reaction that leads to formation of more C and D. The effect is that because you have increased on this side, so if more of this is formed, then what you have increased on this side is consumed. That is basically what the, the Cacheliers principle is stating that when you introduce the stress or a change in a system that is already at equilibrium, the equilibrium shifts in such a way as to cancel the change. So because you have added on this side, then more of these are produced so that whatever you added here is reduced so that the equilibrium is restored. Similarly, if let's say now you, uh, you, uh, you reduce on this side, if you reduce this side, still again, the equilibrium is going to favor forward reaction because now you have made this side less. If you make this side less, the equilibrium tries to increase. So forward reaction is favored again. So two circumstances in which forward reaction will be uh, favored concerning concentration. If you increase the concentration on this side, C and D are produced more. So in that case, we say that the equilibrium shifts to the right because standing on this side, this would be your left hand, this would be your right hand. So the reactants are on the left, products on the right hand side. So when you increase on this side, the equilibrium favors formation of C and D. So in that case, we say that it shifts to the right or it favors forward reaction. In this case, C and D are produced so that the concentration here is made less. Then, if you reduce this side, this becomes more. Again, still the forward reaction will be favored so as to restore which was removed. So if you remove C and D, more of this is made to react so that C and D is formed back. Because you removed, now the system cancels that change by producing more of which you have removed. So you make the concentration less here, so more is formed so that the equilibrium is restored. Now, if you increase more of the products, if you increase the products on this side, then the equilibrium will favor formation of A and B, so that this one decreases. You see, when you increase here, the equilibrium wants here to be less. So to make this one less is to make them react to, for, by forming back A and B. So in that case, we say a uh, backward reaction is favored or the equilibrium shifts the left. So this side is the left. The left hand side. Uh, this is uh, where we have the backward reaction. Left is where we have the backward reaction. Then this 
side is on the right, and this is the direction of the forward reaction. So in this case, so when you increase here, the equilibrium shifts so that it reduces the concentration here. If you increase either C or D, or both of them, then the equilibrium will reduce that concentration by favoring this, the reaction to proceed in this manner such so that C and D react forming back A and B. So backward reaction is favored or the equilibrium shifts to the left. Similarly, if you reduce the concentration of this, backward reaction still will be favored because if you reduce here the concentration, the equilibrium shifts in such a way that this is added because you removed the equilibrium makes this one more. So it encourages C and D to react to form back A and B. So decrease in concentration here favors backward reaction. Increase in concentration here favors backward reaction. So we are going to look at some specific examples in which we are the change in concentration of either the reactants or the products is going to make the equilibrium to favor uh, uh, backward reaction or to favor forward reaction. So we consider some examples. Okay, I have uh, an example here, phenolphthalein. So phenolphthalein is a colorless liquid. But when you add sodium hydroxide, the solution turns pink, of which I have here. So here is a phenolphthalein. You can see it's a colorless solution. Now, this mixture is at the equilibrium. So at the equilibrium is whereby the hydrogen ions and the it is the, let's say at the point of neutralization. The best example to use is the point at the point of neutralization or at the end point. The concentration of hydrogen ions equals the concentration of hydroxide ions. Here I have HCl, the chloric acid, and then here I have sodium hydroxide solution. Now let's see what happens when we add sodium hydroxide to this colorless mixture. So when we add sodium hydroxide, you can see uh, the solution turns pink at so, that point. So you can see the solution turns pink when we add sodium hydroxide, which is what we are having here. So to phenolphthalein, colorless uh, liquid, add hydroxide ion, the solution turns pink. Now, why does the solution turn pink when we add sodium hydroxide solution? So the observation what we have seen is that the solution turns pink. Why is the solution turning pink? The solution turns pink because sodium hydroxide contains hydroxide ions. So if you check in this equation, you'll find that on the left, so this is our left hand side, so this is the left, and then this will be our right. So on the left, we have OH ions. Now, we are adding more OH. So what we are doing is this, is that we are increasing concentration on the left hand side. So if we increase concentration on this side, then the equilibrium will try to reduce, because we have increased the concentration, the equilibrium tries to reduce this concentration. And the way it does so, to reduce this, is to make sure that it reacts. So the hydroxide ions then react to the hydrogen ions from phenolphthalein. So phenolphthalein has two replaceable hydrogen ions. So on the reaction, uh, this is an organic acid. It has two functional groups, the COOH, two of them. So like a auxilic part, two of them. So the hydrogen ions, the two replaceable ion, ionizable ions of hydrogen are made of phenolphthalein combined with hydroxide ions forming water, while uh, phenolphthalein itself forms phenolphthalein ions, and the phenolphthalein ions are pink in color. That is why we see the solution turning this color pink. Now, what happens if we add an acid? So as I said, we have hydrochloric acid here. 
Let's see what happens when we add acid to this mixture which is already pink. So on adding the acid, see the solution turns colorless. Why does the solution turn colorless? So on adding the acid, the observation is that the solution turns colorless. But why does the solution turn colorless? The solution turns colorless because the acid, hydrochloric acid, contains hydrogen ions. So the acid from ionizing it contains hydrogen ions and chloride ions. So by adding hydrochloric acid, what we are doing is we are adding hydrogen ions to the mixture. So the hydrogen ions from the acid neutralizes OH. So the effect of adding hydrochloric acid is that it neutralizes the hydroxide ion. So it reduces the concentration. So then what we have done to this mixture is that we have reduced the concentration on the left hand side. So if you reduce the concentration on the left hand side, the equilibrium will shift in such a way as to increase the concentration on the side that you have reduced. So since we have reduced the concentration here, so the equilibrium will favor this side, the side with the lower concentration. So it is going to make these two, the phenolphthalein ions then, and the water form to react, to form back hydroxide ions and phenolphthalein. So the phenolphthalein form is colorless. And that is why the solution has turned colorless. So that process can go on again and again if we add sodium hydroxide the solution turns pink. If we add the acid, the solution turns colorless. The explanation being the same. Let's consider second example. Here is our second example. So we have chromate 6 ions. When you add, uh, they react to hydrogen ions or acid. They are converted to the form dichromate 6 ions. So chromate 6 ions are yellow. Dichromate 6 ions are orange. So let's say this is an, an equilibrium mixture of a system which is at the equilibrium. And then you introduce a change. And in terms of concentration, so the change could be one you want to add sodium hydroxide. So this is the change that you are introducing to this system that is at equilibrium. So if you add sodium hydroxide to this mixture, then what you are going to observe is that the solution is going to turn yellow. Why is it that addition of sodium hydroxide in this mixture makes the solution turn yellow? This is the reason. Addition of hydrogen ions is going to react with this. So it is going to neutralize hydroxide ions. So OH reacts with uh, hydrogen ions forming water. So in this case, the effect, the effect of addition of OH is that it lowers the concentration. It lowers the concentration of hydrogen ions on the left or in the equilibrium mixture which is on the left hand side so the effect is this that if you lower the concentration on the left then the equilibrium shifts to the left in other words the as far as the equilibrium and concentration is concerned the equilibrium always favors the side with less concentration so since you have decreased on the left then Concentration on the left is decreased, so the equilibrium will favor this side. What that means is that these two are going to be, uh, to be encouraged to react so that they form back the hydrogen ions in this. So that's why the solution turns yellow because the equilibrium will favor the backward reaction. But what if to this equilibrium mixture you added hydrochloric acid? When you add hydrochloric acid to this mixture, the mixture changes to orange. Why is that the case? Why does 
the equilibrium mixture turn orange. The reason is this. When you add the acid, the acid contains hydrogen ion, like just the previous example that we saw. So hydrochloric acid contains hydrogen ion. So addition of hydrochloric acid is the same as increasing the concentration of hydrogen ions. And as we stated initially, is that when you increase the concentration of this side, so the equilibrium will try to reduce the concentration on the side that you have added and to reduce the concentration on the left hand side, the equilibrium will favor the forward reaction. So in other words, the equilibrium shifts to the right. It favors the forward reaction such that more of this is formed using up the hydrogen ions that have been added. So that way it will lower, so in so doing, it will lower so as to lower the concentration, so as to lower the concentration of the hydrogen ion. So when this more of this are formed, that means this is being used up, so it is consumed. So when you add the, the system uses up what you add to lower the concentration, and when you remove to lower the concentration, the system produces more of that which has been lowered. So in this case, so uh, more of, um, in fact, it will be more of chromate six ions. So this, uh, okay, yeah. making sure more of dichromate seven ions in water are formed. So more is formed, thus reducing the concentration of hydrogen ions on the left. Let's consider one more example uh, under concentration and equilibrium. So a final example. Is this one using chromium water? So we have this uh, equilibrium mixture. So this system is at equilibrium. Let's see what happens when you introduce these two changes. First, if you add sodium hydroxide. So when you add sodium hydroxide to this equilibrium mixture, what you will observe is that the solution turns colorless. Why does the solution turn colorless on addition of sodium hydroxide? Addition of sodium hydroxide contains OH. So the hydroxide ions, what you are going to do is they are going to neutralize the hydrogen ions. So the concentration of hydrogen ions should be lowered. So they lower the concentration. So the concentration will be lowered. So that means what we have done to this system is that we have lowered the concentration on the right hand side. So if we lower the concentration on this side, then the consequence is that the equilibrium is going to try to restore the side that we have lowered. It wants to restore this. So it will encourage bromine water and the water molecules to form more hydrogen ions. So the equilibrium shifts to the right or it favors the forward reaction so that more hydrogens are formed back because they were reduced, more are formed. So that is why the solution turns colorless. Now, what if the change is this one? If you add hydrochloric acid to this equilibrium mixture as the change, then what you are going to observe is that the color of the solution turns orange. The color is going to turn orange. And why is the case? Hydrochloric acid contains hydrogen ions. So the hydrogen ions from the acid increases the concentration here. So here you are going to have increased concentration. So if you have increased concentration of hydrogen ions here, so you have more hydrogen ions on this side. So if you have more hydrogen ions, then the system will try to reduce this concentration. So to reduce this concentration, it is going to favor the reaction to come this way, so that these hydrogen ions, together with the bromide ions and the bromide ions, they are forming back bromine water in this. That's the solution. So more bromine water is formed, so the solution turns orange. So therefore, in conclusion, you can mark this statement as far as concentration and uh, equilibrium is concerned.
This is how the equilibrium will always shift. So in conclusion, we can conclude that the equilibrium, the equilibrium always shifts to the side with lower concentration. So the equilibrium will always favor, it will always shift towards the side with less or lower concentration and that will be the end of our lesson. So in the next lesson we will discuss the other factors that is uh, pressure and temperature. Thank you.